Okay. Maybe we do see that puck. Maybe we see it banned here as well, right? Like, or picked mm -hmm. up by Boom. They ban out the Razor instead. What What would be better for Liquid to ban than the puck? Uh, you could ban one of those. There was their Marcy heroes. Mm. Marcy <laughs> Tiny. <laughs> or Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker. I like that because FBZ plays it and Jackie plays it, so it's very flexible for Boom. Yeah, mm -hmm. But th this is, I I I love the thought process that that perhaps might be behind this. Just leave the puck in and see if they pick it. If okay. they don't pick it, we can actually go for it. Or we don't even have to worry about that puck anymore because we know that they're not first phasing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they did, take, they did take Tiny, which is like a preventative measure. I think a lot of teams are still very comfortable playing puck into the Tiny, mm -hmm. but still, uh, Tiny's a great hero against puck. You can put it mid yeah. and it, you get that burst. It's very nice. Yeah, I think not just that as well, like Liquid have shown quite a lot of favoritism towards it too. They like picking it up in the first phase, so it's one of those things that preventative, but they also really like it too. Uh, this this could be our Death Prophet Shaker, yeah, there we go. Instantly, uh, going back to the meta of the Major, I would say, right? Like you get that offlaner that benefits a lot from the Fissure blocks, uh, an offlaner that actually can be left by the Shaker once the lane equilibrium is in her favor. Yeah, I think the interesting thing about this is it shows me that Liquid's looking at what's succeeding and not just trying to like force their play style and their picks. Because um, a lot of teams will like double down, like, no, this is us, we just got to stick to our identity. But Liquid, even throughout the groups, they played like a very big, wide range of hero. There was nothing they picked more than like five or six times. Um, so they're willing to adjust and try stuff that's working for other teams. Yeah, is uh, is that shaker above fifty percent win rate yet? Anyone know? Anyone? He's climbing. If you oh, give me fun. three ever, seconds, I will find out. Ever since, Thank you, ma'am. Ever since God's proclaimed it the worst hero in the history of Dota yeah. at the moment, it's been winning. Yeah, but you, you, need, you need two stats. El uh, Urshaka's win rate and Urshaka's win rate without Jinq. <laughs> if you remove Jinq and then, then we're still looking at like 30%, I think. Okay, yeah. it's on 47% right now, yeah. so it hasn't reached. We're close. But that's going to be the game. Look, that's including LGD. Yeah, yeah. Get rid of LGD. I want to hear some numbers. That's yeah. cruel. That's one, cruel. One hero that I've seen more banned than picked um, at the current tournament, but maybe that's just the games that I've been able to follow, is the Chaos Knight, right? Like, he's been banned quite a bit, but I haven't seen way too many picks. However, I have seen every single player that's a position one at this tournament practicing it in pubs. Like, they love it, they think that the hero is obviously some flavor of the meta. Yeah, last uh, Stockholm, he was also super popular too. And like Blitz said that they, Liquid didn't have that in their arsenal back then. So like going into this major, they wanted to expand their pools. And I like seeing that like even now, uh, the Shaker, it's not like been massively picked by them before now. Uh, I, I definitely like it a lot. Like if you get this Shaker and you play it in like a tiny way, like this is a big thing, right? In the past, Shaker, you buy the boots and you would do the, the wave dragging. And whilst that's still a thing, a, a way you can play, uh, if you buy regen on the shaker now, you can just go to lane, you do the double fissure block, the wave is back, and then you, on the first two waves, are actually quite strong. And you can trade with uh, the heroes, especially with a DP who's also going to be strong, and just like trade, trade, trade. And that's like a very good timing for you in the lane. Yeah, I think you need to make sure that like wave stays in a safe place so you can get those early levels because I think uh, while Shaker can do that, I do I still think overall he's not a very strong laner, and that's something that I think they're for Boom they're recognizing that that's why they pick Chaos Lane. This is a hero that can punish the lane, find the, like basically be a kill lane against a hero like Death Prophet Shaker, where you know these heroes just want to maybe play the lane more passively. So basically, what you do with a Shaker in a lane such as that one, you're kind of in the trees, you're saving your fissure, you're never really using it aggressively. Yeah. The moment DP gets gone on you use that fissure to break apart the fight she siphons and runs away so it's as a save sort of a save laner he's pretty good at the moment but he doesn't really pressure the lane that much uh, however a hero that does pressure the lanes quite a lot very early on on that position five is chen and that's something that we have seen with the dead prophet with the razor shaker that prophet shaker viper shaker you get a lot of sustain from him as well and sometimes that prophet th that's all she needs right the, she needs just a little bit of that save so that she can pop her yules bkb and ulti <laughs> Do you think there is a really good hero that can be paired with Earthshaker when we get to the later game, when it comes more to that team fight, or does DP also have that covered? Ooh. I mean, Shaker doesn't necessarily need like a load of damage dumped on the Echo Slam because the Echo Slam itself is loads of damage. Mm -hmm. I think he is just like a very good utility hero. Like he dissuades the puck, obviously, because he has like you can stun from fog very easily. Um, when you, you see him put here against the Tiny, uh, like Tiny loves to toss people back in our position, right? Fisher is a really long range way to disengage those types of fights. Uh, so I really love this in response. Also, CK. 
I mean, he's got illusions, man. He's kind of sent this this Earthshaker up for some success, despite being despite the laning point, right? Do you think that we need more than the Earthshaker to deal with the CK? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I think Echo Slam is, you know, it's not what Quiet was like five years ago. Yeah, yeah. It's Tats. more of a question mark in the end <laughs> now when he, when he yeah. uses the ulti. <laughs> Echo Slam? <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're coming near the end. Is that all? Yeah. <laughs> coming near the end of this uh, ban phase, and that and puck is still in the pool. It's not really being looked at by either team right now. Do you think it is potentially going to go fully ignored? It might go. Like I think Mickey only played it three times, right? Yeah. So they're not. It's not like they're picking it every single game they can, but there is bans to consider too. Mm -hmm. They don't get the chance. They get the Enchantress. It's not necessarily the the same way of playing. Like Enchantress is way less greedy at this point, even though it, it was reverse once upon a time. Uh, but I feel like she is a little bit of a better laner at the moment, at least. Yeah, I, I really love the Ench pick. I love it a because it makes it hard for CK to burst her because of that untouchable. It also is a hero that can use creeps and her own body to provide vision on the map for Shaker to get those good initiations. Um, you can bait in with yourself, right? I could nerd out uh, about this matchup. Chen versus Edge? <laughs> Chen, uh, go, I feel like please. I'm back no, in let's like... Go, please. This is your time to shine, let Lizzie. No, 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 no. Let, let, let's not go there. Overall, for Team Liquid, I feel like um, they just let this Viper plus Tiny go through. And yeah. Boom, got both of them plus the Chen. I feel that this is the meta right now being played by... Uh, by Boom Esports. Their draft looks super scary. Like this Viper Tiny lane, it, I, and they, they play out. Like, I don't hate the Alchemist pick, but it's going to be a tough lane if this is safe lane out. I've seen a lot of games in which Alchemist is safe lane versus Viper go extremely poorly for him yep. in, in a way that he just gets crushed and needs to be relegated to, to that jungle area very, very early on. Yeah, but uh, you do have Enchantress. Yes, that's the big part. I know, like from the, like some of the games Jenkins casting, he's like, you know, Enchantress can potentially negate the Viper factor. Like if there's a five position you want against uh, to secure an Alks lane, Enchantress, there's like no better than an Enchantress. Yeah, you have like the problem where you are in Radiant, so it's harder for Alk to farm camps as effectively as on Dire, but you do have an Ench, so we memed a lot about camp stacking, but if this game, Shaker or Ench are able to just stack any camp when they're going and moving around on the map, it would be really good for Liquid's catch-up game post-Viper lane. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a stab at the dark here, looking for two mid laners. Um, <laughs> what do you guys <laughs> feel is going to be best? Do we need some of that backline? Do we need someone a little bit more take? Like, what is each team missing for this mid laner that they have to fill? I think both teams are missing a puck. <laughs> it is still there, right? Like, this this kind of blows my mind, considering Liquid's favorite, one of their favorite pairings right now is that puck and that Enchantress. <sighs> For Boom as well, getting a hero that can uh, get across the fissure early on in the game could be nice. So none of these heroes that get just blocked out and killed out by the enemy position uh, too. Mm -hmm. But do you, do you need to think that way? You don't, but at the same time, those heroes are also good. Like all these playmakers that you mentioned usually have repositioning tools. I think the main other option, if Boom don't want to go that direction, is maybe if they want to go for like some of those tanky mids so they can kind of death ball around the chain. Like they like to play Kunkka, for example. Like these kinds of more frontline ones, whereas Puck, you know, you kind of like, you know, hit and run, playing, like, hit, going on the back lines some more. I wouldn't mind that. The only problem for me would be perhaps. Uh, it, it, if you're tanky, you lack something, right? And usually you lack damage if, if you do g go for those full tanky bullets. Yeah, yeah. It can work. They banned the Kunkka themselves, actually. Um, I, I, I feel like getting more damage on Boom perhaps would be a little better. I have seen Yopash playing Invoker a fair few times this tournament, and I kind of like the idea of like a Quaswex vessel invoker running around just trying to beat out Liquid's timings because right now I'm scared. BKB going to come out on DP around like 15 minutes. Alk's going to hit that Radiance BKB around 15 minutes. Earthshake is going to try and get his blink between 15 and 20 minutes. And when they have all these items, Boomer is going to struggle. They're very immobile as a team. Uh, so are you thinking like Parker is double down on that immobility and go for full snowball effect or... Because that's one way of dealing with it. Like, I don't yeah. necessarily disagree yeah. with uh, what Parker called out. It, it yeah. might be a little bit harder to execute, however. It is quite scary. Boom definitely have, like, damage mitigation with the Chen heal right now. So maybe if they just have something here that can re-engage really well when Liquid, like, try and go on them. Like, you just, you, they get gone on, they heal up, and then they just 
Cap you back. A hero like that would be... I was about to say, what if we were going to see a Yopaj tiny mid and they look for a four? There we go. It's yeah. potential with that tusk there. And uh, Liquid now, they see most likely what their matchups are going to be. What's the retaliation? I think first you're scared against this Viper and Tusk. Because <laughs> if Tiny and Viper are difficult to lane against Tusk and Viper, they're not any easier. Oh boy. Oh, last okay. pick Timber. Yeah. They can death, death probably admit if they want this Timber off lane. Um, that's it. And we talked about needing more against the CK. Oh, it's and mid Timber. Oh my Timber goodness. brings it. Like, that's a hero that can make CK's life very miserable. I love it. And also, like, Nine talked about this mid-timber, so it, it is, like, probably one of the only mid-heroes um, that can not only pressure the mid-hero alone, but also pressure the tower alone. Mm -hmm. Like, he does not Honestly, need these really big rotations if they want to focus on their side lanes. Yeah, yeah. the pro problem, you don't have this opportunity of switching up the lanes and putting Viper against him. I don't think so, at least. Maybe there's a world in which you can even go Jackie off lane with a Tusk with a Chen, Tiny safely in Viper mid, but uh, I think the Viper's point here is to pressure the alchemist as well, right? With with the yeah. tusk, so mm -hmm. you don't really have that maneuverability. Mm -hmm. How do you feel those these lanes? How they're going to go, and how it's going to transition into the later game? Where are you putting your, your favorites? Ooh, I, I I still think this viper lane is strong, but I, I'm slightly leaning towards liquid. I think the way they set this draft up and got this last pick timber plus the edge being enough to secure Matu a good lane and. More importantly, it's Alki. He's going to catch up in the jungle. I'll give Liquid like 60 40 favorites on the draft. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, th I think like the timing on Liquid is too scary for Boom. I don't know how they're meant to deal with it. They need to crush their lanes so hard and then just like dominate the map space. I'll be the odd one out. I'll go with Boom game. One. <laughs> I feel that if their lanes do go well, they could crush the game before Alchemist comes online. Yeah, they could just absolutely run away with it. But for now, we're going to run over to Outcasters. It is Lyrical and Trent. Thank you so much, Nat, and the wonderful panel. Trent, we got one of the most hyped games of all time. Winner goes to TI. One of these teams, they absolutely have to win if they want to get in very direct points. How are you feeling? Uh, this you is what you want go? with the DPC. Yes, yes. This is what we come to. Come to our lands, right? Mm -hmm. Get the big points. Make it all the way. And so this is the chance for Liquid. They need to be victorious here. To make it, boom, it'll be out of their hands at that point. Exactly. And uh, But if they just win it, just secure it right now, this right. is your chance. So a humongous series for both teams. And it's not just these teams either. It's all of those respective regions teams. I saw yeah. on there a lot of yeah. Southeast Asian teams. They don't want to play against Boom in those qualifiers. They want to get there uh, on their own merits and you know have a couple more spots. Right now, it's Fnatic and Boom, the only ones. If they're both out, then there's no TI teams that are coming from C through the direct qualification of points. But let's get into this game number one as Liquid head out across the map, picking this last pick, Timbersaw, and a little bit of a switch up, but a pretty devastating one against all these strength melee cores. Yeah, Boom had their options. Obviously, uh, you can only go so far in the drafting phase when you don't have that final pick. And they started out with the Tiny, and in the end, they did decide to give that to Yopaj. And uh, essentially what that says is that they really believed that the Tim's hero was going to be super important here, and they weren't very concerned about getting counterpicked in the mid lane on this Tiny. It was kind of apparent at that point that that was very likely to be the mid hero. And so they, they just put a lot of value into Tim's Tusk here. And of course, Tusk Chen has been an extremely powerful combination uh, over the past couple of years. And that is something that can help you snowball your way to a victory before someone like this Alchemist can come online. If they can keep that momentum going, like Lizard said, win those lanes, and that's the recipe for Boom's success. And on the other side, Liquid trying to hold out, get the Alchemist big and strong. And Boom, after standing up on that high ground, none of Liquid are going to rotate in. They are going to head on over and pick up the bounty runes instead. There might still be a bit of a battle here. We'll see. Just outside of vision. Actually, they're going to run down bottom instead. So this could end up being three... Although, also Zai's heading over. Skem, going to see if he can outclick there. Liquid managed to find two. Boom, on the other side, uh, only getting the one, and they'll pick up two as well. Yeah, and Zai, of course, uh, unfortunately, unaware that he, he could have just gone up there and grabbed that one himself there too, but Skem will come around, happily see that it's still there. We go for two for two for starts. So there was some questions about if there are going to be any lane swap ups going on, but it looks like they're just going to try and play this one straight on Boom, uh, and they're going to have to deal with the Timber Saw in the lane. Um, could be a bit tough for Yopaj, though. 
We've been seeing what's been happening with these Timbersaws just in a side lane who get a solo situation where they're able to uh, pull the lanes apart, farm the lane, pull the wave into a, uh, a jungle camp, and then farm through that as well. And they get off this accelerated start, with re which really increases their pressure across the entire map. And so that's something that Mickey's also going to be able to do here from the mid lane. He can get some space open. And then obviously the big thing is this whirling death taking away all that HP from Yopaj and also uh, continuing to mitigate his last hitting potential, but starting with a lot of base damage on that tiny. Uh, other lanes that we should watch for up on the top side, actually, they managed to find a quick little courier snipe. So Boxy moves on in, takes that down, and uh, Skem and Jackie can have to make do with a little bit less regen there. As I couple punches, forced out of the lane. Boxy goes on in to secure the range creep. Yeah, that was nice. No no panic fissure there, just to like prevent any damage on the Zion. Instead, securing oh. the range creep, and now he's getting some damage on the Skem. And likewise, down bottom, Insania takes some punches. Tim's going to be fine through it. Skem also backs away, but FBZ, boss man indeed. A couple more punches, and Matumba man draws first blood on the Alchemist. Well, you heard the panel saying, you know, there have been situations where, of course, this Viper able to pressure early, but catches him at just level one. So not enough options to slow down Matu. They don't get the combination as well from the Tusk, of course, as you don't have the tag team yet, so you're not able to punch back and really threaten with this damage there. Doesn't mean the lane's over by any means, but certainly a great start there for Liquid. Yeah, one of the benefits of spamming out that wave and getting that level two. Uh, really, really nice. As Yopaj heads on over, we'll pick up a uh, quick little water rune refill and head on back to lane. Mickey does not have a bottle, just going in for the Bracer and trying to pick up a Soul Ring next. But you can see that uh, mainly just that bottom lane that's a little bit of a rough one, losing the Viper. Yeah, meanwhile, you've just got like the supports up top just pulling waves apart while we have Tornado Alley down bottom. Yeah, gotta be careful. And Boxy very happy with the situation though. Yeah, gets the pull through and actually Zai gonna pull the wave behind the tower to connect up with the rest of it. They will lose that range creep. Uh, Skem comes in, so this is all behind the tower. This is great right now. I mean, Boxy's got more last hits than Zai at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's the classic. That's what we've seen. And yeah, indeed, they're, they're going to keep pulling that around. Need to find a way to control that wave on Boom. It's just so hard when you can get those like fast-moving heroes messing with the equilibrium. But again, Mickey. In the mid lane, 12 and 5 versus the 15 and 7. So it hasn't really been a super hard uh, counter pick yet. Yopaj still doing very well in the mid lane. Yeah, we'll have to watch though as uh, you know, level 2 Whirling Death. He's going to keep pushing, harassing with that. And then when the 4 minute runes come up, you imagine that's when there could be a situation of rotations. So uh, see if any supports decide to come mid for that. Uh, Yopaj still has a bound rune inside his jungle. I don't know if Boxy's going to make a play over for that anytime soon because obviously his timber hasn't had uh, the urgency to get there due to the, the no bottle build. Right. And again, they're pressuring up top to try and grab another wave, it looks like. Um, well, at least they're able to zone him back. Skem was doing a good job sending those creeps over that direction. Jackie gets away finally underneath his tower here. But again, a very passive uh, start to this one. Both teams just trying to sort of out uh, maneuver the other ones in terms of getting the, the more macro around the map. As Boxy runs into Skem, picks up that bounty run. And Tim's also interrupted. <laughs> Yo, Patch forced to throw out the avalanche here just to get to the water rune first as well inside the river too, but looks like Skem should be all right on the runaway here. And uh, in, in the bottom lane, what's been happening is they haven't been able to apply this pressure that you want from a Tusk and a Viper because Insania had the pole opened up uh, from the small camp. So he's been managing that, he's been sending the creeps in, and you're kind of getting everything that you want in this lane as an inch, right? Typically, we've run these situations where you're not getting any creeps, it's always being blocked out. But Insania just having a bit of freedom here. Part of that coming from the ability to just like push out the wave because the uh, the Alchemist, but also just uh, that initial creep con uh, control in the camps is so important for this hero. And they're the ones who are actually bullying and pressuring and just like constant unstable concoctions being tossed in from Matu, making it uh, a bit wary for them to to dive in here from Boom, despite yeah. having such an aggressive duo. I mean, you can tell it's one of those matches where neither side wants to like give up anything easy. They're both playing very conservatively and zero deaths uh, to make sure that they are, you know, keeping it even in this pivotal matchup for them. Jackie, very low, uh, needs to get some lifesteal off some of those creeps or something. I feel like being zero, zero, zero at five and a half minutes is probably not good for a ninth pick Tusk. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. It, it puts a lot of pressure on your mid game, you know. See, Opaj. I mean, this is going to be an interesting point to see what happens when Mikke hits six. He just gets it now, and it's hard to imagine him staying in this lane with Chakram available. Even though he doesn't have the timber chain, it's still really dangerous. And you can see Tiny already heading back to base. Yeah, Tim's, oh, he tries to go with the chase down the tag team. They went so long, and then Insania just captures the creep of the jungle. Yeah, that'll happen. Oh, there's the ensnare coming in. They got level Need six body on blocks Mikke, here. But oh, what? they won't go for it. Interesting. I really thought with the Fisher they would just, uh, is it just that too much wasted time, I guess, basically? Like, I feel like, uh, I guess there's always a chance he just gets a snowball up, right? Like, FPZ gives him vision of the camp, he snowballs to the neutrals or something, and so right. could just be a bad chase. Opaj eats a Chakram. Better to pressure the Tiny. Right. Whirling Death, they're actually glyphing for the Catapult and find him here. Opaj doesn't have a target to toss to. Not going to connect with that Chakram, but still, Catapult being alive means there's some good damage onto this mid-tier one. And they try and kill it off. Almost dead. Move on in, and Yopaj takes out the catapult. So Liquid is slowly winning these like laning stage engagements. They're getting more out of the lanes, it looks like, according to those last hits denies. Um, but you can see that it's not a huge differential. Still less than a thousand gold separated him, and it's an alchemist at the end of the day. I think the problem to me is that uh, this constant pressure on Yopaj just means that there's going to be more support attention coming mid, particularly from Tim's, and then even just like. Uh, scam too. You can see he's kind of floating around this area. So this is where the side lanes are going to suffer. And even if they're not suffering, they're definitely not uh, progressing in an offensive manner. So someone like Matsu, like he, he's just been kind of free farming. I mean, yeah. He's having an excellent stack considering he's in a lane versus a Tusk and a Viper. I feel like Insania did a very good job of actually showing off the strength of the Enchantress when everything goes right. Like you can see why he has put so much effort into blocking off these creeps and everything because he, he's just given so much space for Matsu here. Right. Al could gain everything that he wants. And Zai playing much more for the laning stages. And Sania runs into Tim's, and this might finally be a bit too far for him. The tag team, a couple punches, but Matumba Man moves in. Snowball to dodge the stun, and still FBZ taking a lot of damage with all that minus no armor and having the extra creep to good shards block off. Oh, that was a pretty bait. Stun is there. It's not enough to kill the Viper. Well played by Boom. Yeah, Yopash needing that desperately, right? Because he doesn't really have that many safe places to go right now. He's not the fastest neutral farmer at this point, and he's got maxed out Avalanche, so he really needs to find a situation where he can find a hero because of this Timber Saw's threat in the mid lane. Ideal situation there. It's absolutely huge. That puts him second on net worth. Huge bonus for Yopaj. Very, very big. And Mikke, of course, wants to make a, a lot happen at this point in the game. The three points up in reactive armor. Has the Arcane Boots about to come out now, trying to pressure the tower. A lot of the damage comes via the creeps. Another Fissure block off. We've seen this before. Yopaj tries to get away the Hurricane. Avalanche thrown out. Viper Strike now onto Mikke. FBZ trying to survive through this. And in fact, they're going to be able to. Mikke goes down. Boom. They bring numbers mid and punish that heavy pressure into the mid lane. Okay, not supposed to be going down at this point. I mean, obviously, you are forcing these rotations, so that is still good here for Zai, who's able to pressure onto the tower. Does pop the exorcism as the stun comes out from Jackie. But a nice fissure block off, and Jackie in trouble. I don't think there's any way out of this one. As Zai takes the kill and is going to move to try and secure the tower, there is a glyph available. And in fact, with the Opage in the area, we'll find Boxy, Ava toss, couple more punches, they get the kill, glyph the tower. Boom, still protecting objectives. I feel like there's such small moments for Yopaj that he's been needing to catch this game because of his build, right? He's so reliant on getting these heroes that it, it's actually kind of ridiculous. He's finding two perfect moments there. Heads up play by Zai just to back out with Tim's nearby and having a lot of lockdown. They even got the Ogre Bruiser, I think. Uh, they are not wanting to tempt fate. It sends Jackie's mid lane now. I'm gonna try and hold this down. It does provide a bit of a threat in terms of rotation, the stun, and the potential moves from Tim's. Tim's in behind the tier one. Yeah. It's a great ward to spot these TPs and even catches Boxy a little bit here for some harass, but not gonna find anything too serious as now. Four heroes mid, they're gonna find the 10 minute rune. Unfortunately, just a regen though. Right. Not, not what you're hoping for. You're kinda hoping to make a smoke play, I'd imagine, with Yopaj right there. Well, you talked about the, the need that they had to get active as uh, so just leaving some trash behind it. We'll pick up the shovel. <laughs> um, the, the sort of 
pressure that was on this Tusk to make a lot of mid-game movements, uh, you know, keep himself active, get kills. So far, he's been able to do that, kind of mirroring a couple of those movements that we've seen from the Earthshaker. Um, but likewise, I'm looking at this this Liquid Draft. You've got Timber Saw, you've got Enchantress, you've got Death Prophet, and at 10 minutes, all the Tier 1 tower is relatively healthy. It's a little bit uh, scary. I mean, I guess they've got the Alk in their back pocket, but... Yeah, you and mine have a little bit more pressure in it. It seems like a Boom just able to put these uh, sort of like stalwart lane holders in place, right? They're just throwing down someone like this uh, CK right. into the lane whenever necessary. Sania. Have it. Toss. Couple more punches. Very survivable, but in the end, they'll bring down Bambi and Boom look to take that bottom tier one while FBZ makes the movement to mid. Sets up to defend. So Liquid. While they have a lot of sustain, they have not been able to latch onto those objectives yet. Waiting for Matumba Man's Radiance, which is just about completed on the Relic. Yeah, the, we kind of have like like five wall heroes, I guess, in this game, or six even. The sense of just like holding the tower and yeah. sort of requiring a lot of effort if you want to actually overtake in these situations. Uh, pretty much like all the Tricor. On Boom can provide that role, but they just kind of like sit there, camp a little bit, and once the numbers are too big, they, they manage to find their way out, of course, is Jackie just <laughs> hitting a stack. Not the best hero for this, obviously. It takes a bit of time. Oh, yeah. Top of him pulling the creep wave over to his camp, and mid lane, they're pressuring. Well, also in the jungle, Liquid is kind of chasing this uh, CK out of there. He's so, back. like, he does not care. You know, he's no. like, yeah, this isn't that great for me, but my whole team is rotating mid. They're grabbing that tower. This is Chen coming online right now, farming in towards that mech. And again, if, if you do wait and get the Radiance timing, Liquid feel like they're going to be very strong at that point, but how much damage is going to be done uh, around that moment. As well as who is Yopaj going to catch the start of these fights, right? Like, has that Blink Dagger. Every fight wants to open with an Ava toss into a, a follow-up there as well from Tim. So you can kill pretty much anyone at the start if you're in sync there. Boxy spots Yopaj. Can't stop it, though. Tim's available. The punch. The shards. Nothing done. Wow, Zai is committing. Goes in. Exorcism. Silence. Wants to make a big move. Is it going to be a little bit of a dangerous one? Gets some separation. Zai gets caught by the stomp. But Yopaj already dead. FPZ turns with the Viper Strike. Zai is done. Scam backs away from Mickey, but the Timber Saw will clean up. Creeps need to back out at this point as it's a trade of two for two. Yeah, heavy commit there from Zai, but not able to get the uh, the shard block. I feel like they wanted to get the wall in, but weren't able to do it. So Zai, although he was isolated and does end up dying for it, still to get the kill on Yopaj is really going to help slow down this pacing from Boom. But much like the Radiance being built Radiance up and this backup from Matu, there is a similar situation here from Jackie, who's just trying to farm into that secondary item of the Echo Saber and provide a little bit more threat in these team fights when he finally decides to join up. Well, and the, the big differential is, of course, like supports on Boom, getting a lot of farm, about a thousand gold ahead of the Anch and the Earthshaker, but it's also that Alchemist, which now completed the Radiance pretty much uh, top of the net worth and looking to get into the BKB next, but he's still very vulnerable with no BKB. If they can connect, Matamba Man, does he scout out that they're there? No, they have the toss back. Do they have enough damage though? They definitely will. As he's broken, they get the finish. Skem oh, shows up with the mech for the save. Tim's trying to walk away. They have the snowball. FBZ still trying to chase onto Zai Chakram. Just a little bit off the mark. And another round of the avalanche, the toss back. They pull him in for the reality rift. You lose the tusk, but you take Alk and Death Prophet. Yeah, Zai getting the Yules delivered mid-engagement there, but not, not even getting a chance to use it. It gets blown up so quickly there. And that's what we're talking about. Like, you, you think about this uh, Tiny maybe not able to blow up some of these tankier heroes, but that's one thing that Tusk can provide for you. So even if they felt like maybe Yopaj would have a bit of a rougher time mid and wouldn't get that like super fast experience acceleration where you get the more damage by leveling up all your skills, getting the ulti, by having that extra bit of oomph on the Tusk, they can still get a big target like Matu. And I mean, it, it has been a really fabulous showing so far from Boom. Uh, they, they've recognized when Liquid is strong, dodged away from those fights, keeping that mid tower alive for so long. And I mean, Yopaj, right before he stepped into the acid spray, gets the blink off, finds Tumbo Man. Yeah, and I mean, you need that toss back, right? Like, you, you needed that bonus damage there from Tim's. There can't be any delay for that regen to kick in there. And Skem's mech really helping to uh, solidify Liquid committing a bit too hard for this fight. Very, very clutch stuff. And another toss back. What a hero. Yeah.
you know, those low cool Apparently downs. Tiny's good. <laughs> Tiny is very good. Well, Matumba Man, not too concerned, gets a little dance on. Still feeling like they're in a, a decent position, and I mm -hmm. can't argue with that. Yeah, he's just doing Alp Taunt, and yeah, you can see there's a, a little wall of wards here. Uh, that one behind the tier one still surviving all the way through there. We got another one in the jungle right there, too, so Yopaj, he's hunting. But Liquid, they're not presenting themselves as a target yet. As everybody on the bottom side of the map, they've given up that Roche area to boom. Although, I don't think that they want to go in and take it anytime soon. Oh, look at that ward. They just popped on that smoke over the Dire Ooh. Observer ward, too. So, I think that it was just running low. Uh, I'm curious if Boxy opts for the shard or if he wants to try and hang all the way for the Blink Dagger. Right. It's a bit of a tough call this game because I do think the shard is really valuable when you're playing with the... Uh, the Death Prophet, as well as the Timber and the Elk, right? They should be long-delayed fights. There's a lot of sustain and regen on his team, and so you do get the one-shot jump with the Echo Slam Blink, sure, but the Shard, like the multiple spells, the constant suns, I, I actually feel like it's worth it if you're not going to be able to farm to that Blink Dagger, and I do think he's going to struggle to get there this game. This would be the moment when, obviously, a Blink would be great, but uh, I mean, there's nowhere near it, and like you said, uh, could be a bit of a problem, particularly if Boom can take this Aegis and start translating that into more objectives around the map, shutting down the areas where Liquid can farm. They do manage to take that bottom tier one tower on Liquid, so opening up the map a little bit. All the tier ones now at dead in this game. But. This, I mean, Box is just going to pray for a Philly, yeah. honestly. I feel like, like it's, it's so, it's this so next hard. round of neutrals comes in, I don't know where he's going to get a wave to farm this Blake Dagger. He's just going to need a good engagement, some sort of fight where he can hang in there, get these fissures, and hope that he doesn't get caught farming under towers like this, because it's certainly a precarious position for him with a tiny hunting across the map, but instead they're smoking. They're trying to find a bigger target. Yeah, that would have been a good kill on Boxy, but instead this oh. could be a bigger one. Fine side for the tossback, but a little bit away doesn't stun. matter. He's dead. He has a Yules. Yeah, that's he pretty He can't rough. use it. That's, it's not available. Not ready. Tough, tough. All right, well, space. He's halfway. You know, he's, he has about 600 gold to go. He's getting there. Yeah. He got that wave up top. Mickey, in the meantime, taking the other wave. Radiant's bottom tower. And we'll see. For now, boom. They're free to do whatever they want on the map. Wherever they want to go, it feels like Liquid can't fight them. Yeah, and slowly it becomes this vacuum situation where all the gold gets kind of sucked up by Matu. And you see if you can get him into that next item past this BKB. But I could see a, a good start to the fight if they manage to get the Blink Dagger done for Boxy. He gets a decent initiation. Matu's in there with a the big burn damage, BKB, and uh, there will be some issues of control, of course, as they don't have that much to deal with the BKB at this point. You know, Tim's isn't really that scary. He can just sort of like, uh, stun you down a bit, but uh, Yopaj still heavily relying on the magic burst. Ooh. There's a lot of heroes over there. I don't know if they would have been able to take down Yopaj anyways, to be honest. 200 gold away for Boxy. And an outpost now for Boom. Big control, 18 minutes into a game. And they have vision all over this area. They see everything that Matumbo Man's doing. Underneath those wards. And Liquid. I mean, Look at this TP up top, too. That is interesting. Okay. Everyone's coming. Uh oh, look at Insania. Yeah, Insania is in some trouble there. Although, well, from the high ground. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Okay, I like it. The hurricane. I was like, I was like he doesn't have a tumbler, <laughs> so I was like, oh, there it is. Uh, the old birds helping out. Kind of love those birds. They're awesome. And Blink's done. Okay, BKB for the Elk completed. You've got Timber Sauce, Sanjin Kaya. I mean, this is about as good a time as I, I see to make a fight happen, but I guess the other problem is the Aegis, so they kind of still have to wait it out a bit. It's just terrifying to think of how do you manage to survive into getting the benefits of your regeneration, right? Yeah. It, it's just a matter of burst. You have three cores that rely on that ability of reactive armor or just the, the siphon plus the exorcism or just chemical rage. Like They all have a, a very similar concept here. At the very least, uh, we don't have any sort of like spear vessel or something. True. So that, that's always a bonus. I mean, the other thing that you could look at is the, the BKBs for... Uh, Boom, right? Just completing that now on the, the CK. Also have it done on the Viper. And Mickey, he just walks into him. Fissure is there. But he's got the BKB if they need it. Tim's ready with the snowball save. FBZ jumped upon. FBZ just gets blown up and dead. Okay. Now turn. Look for Yopash. Mickey right on him. 
And Yopage also likely to fall. They just walked in and died. Yeah, Tim's was like 20 gold away from a blink. Oh, man. So not having that save option. And, and they just kind of slow rolled them a bit, right? They, they kind of whittle them down. We know how Boom want to play these fights. They want that big burst of damage at the very beginning. And so when you catch the Viper first, and they, they're able to just kind of slowly crawl their way into that fight, having some vision up on the high ground there too. Yeah. That was perfect. I mean, again, you had the BKB on the Viper, just didn't want to pop it. And yep. maybe a bit of greed there, but it ends up paying off for Liquid. Suddenly, they find their feet in this match. Still, you can see Dota Plus win probability heavily favoring Boom, but that could have been one of those inflection points. We'll see if it ends up mattering as the game goes on here. It's I trying to get towards the BKB. Yeah, there's certainly a chance we look back at this and say, oh, they, they lost their map control, you know, and then they had a really hard time getting it back or maybe lose more heroes in the situation because finally Liquid are just out there. You know, yeah. they're back. Uh, Boom had just kind of sheltered them back in, forced them to uh, the worst parts of the map for farming, but they're able to get back out here now. But, uh, yeah, as I said, you know, Mage Slayer, full timing BKB, still right. there for Jackie. So even when he does lose this Aegis, it's not like he's going to be frail by any means. No. No, and there's, you know, other things that are coming out soon for Boom. They got that BKB. Not sure if that smoke was scouted or not. Don't uh, think Boom. so. Heading across the map. As the Aegis expires, they're running in towards Insania, but if they keep heading north, they might find some juicier targets. Ooh, they might find Matsu's Hyperstone here if he buys it. Courier. Tim's punch, yep. Radiant All right, they got the Hyperstone. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> that would have been nice. You can't catch Mickey though. And he also is trying to get towards uh, his next item, Lotus Orb. Going to be done in just a, a trip to the secret shop. Alk still maintaining that pretty substantial lead over the CK, which you would anticipate. And with the BKB done now, no Hyperstone yet. Uh, the question is how do they start these fights? Who catches who? Are BKBs going to get off or are people going to get bursted? I think Boom are uh, reaching a point now where these fights are hard to initiate. Yeah, like they can start going into towers and maybe force a bad initiation from Liquid, but if they're at this point where they're trying to catch these heroes, you know, we're going to have a four staff save from Insania, which of course, uh, you know, when when you're well coordinated, they can still make a humongous deal, especially when you're being pushed towards the end. She's got the nature's attendance going, and again, we're talking about this idea of the regen. Every save is just amplified when you have a, a lineup like Liquid because they have their natural ability to try and regenerate. After that, yeah. you just need to find and buy them a little bit of space, and that's what this Enchantress and this oh. Earthshaker are going to try and do. Jackie Mickey goes into all of them. Oh, he's broken. Reactive armor stacks not where they need to be. He is gone. Snowball afterwards to Insania and just timber chained into the wrong spot. Zai up on the high ground, gonna pop the BKB exorcism. Still thinks that this is a decent fight for them as well, Matumba Man pulled back in. He pops his BKB, tries to run away from Jackie Yopaj, throws out the avalanche and gets a little bit of distance. And that might be enough to get him away. So the fights break down after the initial volley, but that's exorcism down. Yeah, and this is a situation where like it, it just can't happen like that. I'm talking about the difficulties of the initiation where they really self to find that big toss back. Mickey toss himself into boom. Yeah. You know, he, he did Tiny's job for him. <laughs> that's right. Oh, they stuck around though. Oh. They waited and they lurked and he got punished for being greedy. That was, that was very well done. Liquid needed that. It feels like Yopash was like trying to bait something because he had Tim's coming over and he's like, ah, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll find something. No Yopaj in this fight, if they want to take it. And Roche, 35 seconds until it's capable of respawning. This game, again, it straddled that line of, you know, 1,000, 2,000 gold lead the entire time. With pretty big stratifications across the different layers of cores. But we're getting to the point now where it really comes down to how that initiation starts. Yeah, I mean, we just have so much blink potential, right? We have the, uh, the Tusk, the CK, and the Tiny looking for that big hop where they just get in there and blow you up. So uh, if there's an Aegis on Liquid, that uh, that nullifies a lot of this net worth that they then spent. So America's favorite game in 24 seconds. 30. Okay, Two not even <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> Three minutes. All right, so it's a big, big timer for the Roche. And who is that going to benefit this situation? Well, I, I suppose it's probably Liquid. As time seems to be on their side. That's true. AC now done on the Alchemist. But it also comes down a lot to who has that vision. Liquid with a really good ward up on that high ground, scouting all of Boom's movement across the map there. Um, on that lower pillar, but 
Boom also getting down a ward themselves. They didn't actually deward that one, it looks like, so we'll keep it for the moment. And Liquid, do they want to? Yeah, they scan. They know what's happening. Immediately head out of that triangle. Going to leave it and head to their vision instead. Yeah, and that edge creep just running around as well, trying to find its vision on them and give an idea of what's up as it gets tossed avid at yeah. Yopaj, so. Mega Mega dead. Have that sentry ward up there. And it, it's that weird moment where you, like this would normally be where you'd want to take that fight and go immediately into the Roche pit. Neither team has gone and checked it yet. Yeah, uh, Boxy, yeah. I mean, he has the shard. He's holding here. This is a great spot to fight from Boxy. Walks into everybody, gets silenced, and just going to die. Another one of those very bizarre moments where you think you could take the fight and just very wrong. That was, uh, that was interesting. <laughs> That's a bold move. That's what that is. I mean, number one, maybe not expecting them to necessarily all be there, or he's thinking, like, I can snowball fast enough, right? That I feel like that was his play. I'm going right. to snowball. I'll provide the vision. You guys have this sweet jump that you can punish on this, but that's still risky into an Earthshaker because if you don't have a stun or at least some sort of damage on the box and he can just reposition with the blink, with the sharp, with the echo, it's not that easy. Uh, then again, you know, maybe they just preemptively pop their BKBs and they do it in a very aggressive manner when they go. That's true, too. <laughs> Scam one of that D-Ward so bad, he yeah. just... He threw the sentry down, huh? Yeah, I'll double sentry that cliff. I don't care. So in spite of that nice pickoff, it doesn't end up battering that much at all. I mean, you didn't have to use a buyback. Everybody's together again. And the only thing that's really changed is the swap out of position and vision on the map, where now it's liquid that hold this high ground. Uh, and boom, hanging on to the pillar above. Yeah, we both got creeps in. It's a creep battle in the, you know, the Roche pit here. One of them's not putting up too much of a fight. Oh, God. Poor guy. Didn't stand a chance. He was busy. He was shopping this game, you know? <laughs> he himself a Vlad here as he builds in towards that Wraith Pact. Dasher being done would be pretty good, too. Has there been that much more progression, I feel like, out of uh, Yopaj? Doesn't look like it. We did see the AC completed for the Alk, and for now, it's still just that BKB and the Echo Saber. CK, Mage Slayer done, trying to get into the heart. Stun, kill off the Enchcrete. That next round of neutrals. Be nice down here in a second. That was a good one. Yeah, you got him. Roche respawns. Neither team confident to go on in. I mean, these matches, when yep. going up one game in a three game series to determine who goes to TI, you can see just how careful, calculated, and like nobody wants to be the person that, like, you know, goes in and loses everything. Yeah, it's just every one little bit, too, right? You know, like, that looks like Boxy's level 11, almost 12. It's like, well, I can really use a couple more points in my skills right now. Yeah. Every little bit helps on Shaker, be it the ulti points or be it the points in Aftershock. I mean, with a shard, I'm sure you can make a case for the Aftershock. Smoke, they don't get Mickey in it. But Liquid, thinking this is their moment to head in. Insania, waiting for the smoke to break. He gets a ward up on the high ground. That Tim uh -huh. left his courier there for so long intentionally for this exact situation, so he could spot when the smoke comes in. That courier's been there forever. That's a great play by Tim's. So he knows that they spent their smoke. They know that they're in the pit right now. But do they know that Roche is being taken? Need to send in some creeps, get some vision there. Yopaj. He blinks for the D ward, Tim's. Oh, oh, he tries oh. to force to have him down. Insane is getting crazy. But they do have a snowball over to some creeps. And a little bit of a misplay. They thought that he was going over that direction, and Yopaj pops the BKB, runs through. Things get a little bit wild. TP's out, realizing that was not the fight they thought it was going to be. Well, he gets a free exit, but yeah, the question is, can he get back in for a good spot in this fight now? The illusion bait was interesting. All right, we got the mech. We got the hand of God. They see this. The acid spray down, breaking any blink daggers that could come out. Boom, they need to find another way to get in. The Chakram, it's blocking their path. Dude, the Chakram is right there, ready to go. Jackie, BKB, walks in for the stun. A bash now on a Matumba Man. The shorts keep him inside. Pash, they need Tims. to finish this off. Do they have a way in? Yo, Pash, with the combo, but Bopsy says no. And Matumba Man snatches the Aegis. Yo, Pash in trouble. He goes down. Liquid, they managed to win that fight, getting the Aegis on the Alk. Oh. What a stop from Boxy. And that was the cost of spending that BKB early. Didn't have it when he really needed it, jumping in to try and grab that Aegis. 
Yes, you're able to get the kill on the Roche, but obviously they'll get the higher prize there on Team Liquid. And all of that coming back to the way they played around this pillar, that vision, even just that initial play by Insania to attempt the cheeky four staff offensively to push him to the low ground, all of that coming back, breaking apart this idea of boom, the block on the staircase from oh, the yeah. Shocker, just beautiful stuff. And imagine if that nether toxin was just placed a little bit to the left inside the pit or something, then that stun's not there. Maybe you find a way. Oh, Boxy. He was right ready for it. When they needed him most, came in for it. But 11, or rather 10 to 13. The thing that's interesting is that because that fight was still kind of a wash, the main victory is that you've got this Alk Alka Aegis now, but I don't know if that's going to make him feel confident pushing across the map either. We'll see. To I mean, me, it just comes down to the question of like how confident are Boom now? Like, yeah. Do they feel like they can actually approach more of these tier twos or even a tier three at that point now that they're up to this rate fact? It, it comes down to Yopaj having to put himself in this role of the support. Like uh, in this situation, that's where you want the four tiny because you want to be a bit riskier, much right. like he had to like BKB TP out. That, that's the cost of doing these tossbacks. Yeah, it gets really hard to make those fights be perfect. And if you don't preemptively BKB, you get Yules. Like, look at this vision on the high ground. You're going to get a pre Yules from Zai if you go in on here. So, great D ward there. Very important right now. And Tim's like, that's his courier, right? Yeah. You know, this is why a lot of support players love playing these heroes that can actually get that vision with their skills on the high ground. But sometimes you, you just got to throw down sentries and bring your courier along for the ride. I feel like there's like a Pavlovian response where people just have to hit a courier if they see it running by. You know, so he's going to bait that out at some point. But AC done on FBZ. They've got triple BKB for Liquid as Timbersaw picked one up. It's interesting because you mentioned like Yopaj kind of falling back almost into a supporting type role. And we're seeing for FBZ, he feels that pressure to be that other right clicker, that other yeah. hero that can, uh, you know, make the difference with Jackie. It's certainly the best thing he could do in a game like this versus a, a DP, a Timber, and an Alchemist like the Scotty. We, we know what their heroes do, right? You're, yeah. you're trying to beat out this regen. Meanwhile, Jackie's like, what if I just regen? You know, what, what if I just buy a heart? How about, how about that? Is that going to work out for us? He's a strong boy. All right, well, Yopaj, not as risky, potentially, by using the Shadow Blade here. Radiant Vision, they actually don't have any sentries here. This is a big reveal. But Finds one. Mickey toss back onto FBZ. The BKB response. Don't know if he spotted that when they tossed him back. FBZ will have the Viper Strike. Jackie Ooh. blows up Insania. Did not stand a chance. Turns for another two-second stun. Can they bring down Mickey? Instead, they focus down on Desai. Has on to FBZ. back out. FBZ in some trouble. The Bash is there, but Matuba Man not trying to go for the full commit. Trying to run away is Scam. He gets stunned. He gets controlled. Chen getting a lot of regen in, but does not have the help of his team. Matumba Man BKB wearing out. Tim's thinking about turning to him. With the tier two tower already dead, I don't know if Boom can take this fight anymore. Oh, they want to chase. They got Blink on CK. They got Blink on Tusk. Viper has this range damage. They want to go in. Five seconds stun. Have a toss from Yopash. Couple more punches is gone. No Aegis. Turns on his eye now. Snowball. Jackie beating into him, but Boxy moves on in. Is it not enough though? They turn, FBZ still surviving, so much survivability on this Viper. Matumba Man gets his ulti off, and Tim's runs on in silence. FBZ oh, down low, yours. and he's in trouble as they bring him down for the finish. Tim's now turns, Mickey back in, Alk dies. Jackie in this long extended fight, the heart region doing so much for him. He's got a couple more punches. Tim's wants to walk back through this. He's out it's of mana. It's 2v3, but Insania is far away and not really going to provide that much help. Jackie low, the chakram, it's out. He's trying to regen off of creeps. There's the still rest of the snowball. team is ready to come in. They do have the Chen nearby. Scam gets there for the mech. It's enough for the save. Both of the creep heroes are back. They have the flat or the turn and Sadia just dies again. <laughs> Was hoping something else would go on, but Tim's there with the BKB cancel. Mickey falls in the extended fight. CK Chen, they still win. Tim's just lurking through the tree line throughout all of this, that vision, helping them out through so much of this engagement, allowing him to play nice and safe. He started out the fight by also kiting Matu up at the top near the tier two tower while the rest of his allies were focusing down some of these other uh, important targets. And great prioritization throughout so much of this from Jackie too. Just Insania, I think, played about two seconds of that fight between two lives. <laughs> it was rough. Help is the call from him and he needs it. Oh, geez, 34 minutes in and 
Very little separating the two teams, but you find these pickoffs. Down bottom, Boxy goes down, Yopaj connects. Timbersaw is dead for 40. That is a pricey death here, and yeah, part of that replay. I mean, you can just see, honestly, the story of this fight is just total chaos, right? It's so broken out there in the bottom lane. That's where you're the sorry, in the bottom picture, that's where you saw that Tim's like, he secured so much of Matu's time, and he spent so much of that fight in 20% HP or less, and he did so much for the team because of that. Gotta potentially get back into the real game here is they do have buybacks on two heroes, but you don't want to have to use it. Matumba Man pops that BKB, backs away. Rax going down. 3k gold, but it, I mean, they're not willing to buy back for this one yet. It's so close. How much damage can Boom get while they're waiting? They've already taken one melee. Do they stick around for another or do they back out? Gotta watch out for that big Echo Slam. He's got it ready. Boxy TPing in. Wants to find his target, but will he be able to? They already have the breakdown. He won't have a stun if he goes in. FBZ turned upon. They have the BKB there waiting for the breakdown. Boxy still hunting, waiting in the backside. Zai tries to burn out a little bit more on these heroes, but they can't find a target. FBZ low. Fissure connects onto two. Pretty good. And they're going to find at least those two. And they're backing out of there. TP out from the tiny. Jackie just trying to run, and they, they couldn't get the sync there. They're trying to get like the penitence plus the tag team and just blow up somebody if they could at this point. But the BKBs are all up there from Liquid. They do defend their high ground. This game very back and forth, but boom, strike the first big economic damage, the big creep wave damage, getting that mid melee racks down. They still have a ward up on that high ground because the tower was taken is inside the base, but it seems unlikely to just go for another, like, run down another lane with all of Liquid alive. Yeah, much like uh, losing Boxy last time with a couple heroes dead. We'll see if they lose <gasps> someone on Boom. Zai, broken, toss back, stun. Oh, but the Yules, he gets away. Zai was wondering if they were going to go for the full chain stun, but doesn't get it. And where was I? Right. Back to taking this outpost here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, neutral's about to come up again as well here. Look at that next round, but Heroes respawning with Tusk and the big range of initiation. They could engage now if they wanted to. Overwhelming Blink completed now for Matu. They are struggling with the damage, obviously. That's that's one issue that we saw from Jack with the heart. They're, they're trying to like chew through this guy, so maybe that extra bit of burst at the beginning can help out on uh, some of these side heroes. You know, Maybe it's not going to do that much versus the, the CK necessarily, but trying to catch Skem at the beginning. Ooh, Timeless Relic is nice. That's some extra damage for him. And look at this wrap here. Hand of God, not there. So missing a pretty key part of their fight. They're going to find Zai again. Runs right into him. Stun, BKB. Zai, Yule Scepter. Tries to get out. Can he escape? Matumba Man shows up. Good stun onto the Tusk. Boxy joking together with the rest of the team. A good burst down as Zai will fall. Mickey BKB, his is wearing down lower. Boxy FBC buyback. right on top of him. Where do they go next? A couple more bits of control. The break is there. This Viper is doing so much work. Standing tall in front of all of them. He's but left alone. The though. wrap through, yeah, he's eventually going to fall. FBZ goes down, but they got the buyback oh, out of Zai. It was almost an instant rush, too. It's back up. That is huge. Liquid, do they check? Oh, they might not check. They don't realize that it's up. Ah, this would have been the moment. Could have been. No, Zai gets in there. Zai's going for it. He's got the brain. He checks. The pings are there. A self stun going to come onto Matumba. And boom. Are they going to recognize? I, it's, it was such a quick Roche respawn. This is such a gift for Liquid. Zai heading on into the pit to yeah. check it, and boom, they're just going to have no idea. Yeah, if you're not sure, you can't really afford these buybacks, especially on FBC. Oh, what a big win that That's is. That's an Aghanim Scepter as well here. Oh my god. What a turn of fate. Liquid get gifted by Gaben. Just a huge win. Peace. Off the back of that kill on FBZ, and a second Chakram, suddenly they have significantly less damage issues. Mickey is huge. They must have given him the shard too, huh? I think so. Unless it was Jack, you got the other one. I'm not even sure at this point, but uh, it's a bit chaotic on that first row. So not many shards this game. A little unusual. Only three across the board. True. Yeah, only a couple of them there. And how much does this change things? I mean, boom, okay, they have this ward. They want to take advantage of it. They find Boxy right at the start. Stun, interrupted. Matumba Man, ready for the punish. The bash is there. They got him controlled. Skip trying to keep him alive. And Hand of God, everything for Jackie. But eventually, no Snowball ball. Safe keeps him alive. Oh, the regen is going to come out. But will it be enough to make him survive through the second salvo? It won't. 
They went for it all, and it did not work. FBZ also in trouble as they find another pick. And boom, they felt their moment. They yeah, thought yeah. they could do it. But man, I'll say Blastrig is really freaking good against CK. Yeah, I definitely understand the idea though. Like he feels the need to go for these plays because of the itemization that they have here with this Blood Thor and like he's he's gone. He, they have to find the solitary confinement to just kill any of these heroes on Liquid. You know, uh, <laughs> there, there's just too much assistance. I think he dies if he doesn't have Blastrig. Yeah, like it, it was so close. Yeah, unreal. Five thousand gold lead already after that fight and now even further ahead and boom it was just it wasn't gonna work yeah i mean they took the the mid racks at least right so they've gotten that that's true but uh not able to get any further pressure after that and now coming down to the tier two in the mid lane might get a rack to their own if they're not careful still 30 seconds without ck the tumba man walks high ground they got greaves on chen buyback status he is 1400 gold away on the CK. They will use the Glyph, Liquid Glyph themselves. Oh no, they still hold theirs. Yeah, Tim's is slowly approaching from the back here. Of course, these fights, uh, they've been picking him off at the start. It's made the fights a little bit more difficult to execute from Boom, but Tim's gonna be in a good spot this time. Yopaj, Abba, toss back into the base. Pops the BKB, Matumba Man wants to get away. Boom's still gonna try and chase this. Tim's has the control, where's the snowball afterwards? The, the BKB is there, brought down low, but Tim's, he has his own BKB, he's gonna survive through at least the first salvo. Got snowball. Jackie pulls him back in, but surviving not long enough. They take down Matumba Man, Foxy, it's not there. They don't have nearly enough damage. Liquid, they're in pretty deep. Tim's walking away, Zai gets the finish. Chases, chases, they buy back. Mickey hoping to escape. And Zai will TP away. Oh, the but buyback from Tim's. He was ready for it. They knew. Yopaj still trying to chase Boxy, keeping him under control. Mickey hoping to get out of here, but do they have the avalanche? The tree toss? The chakram? Oh, the break it? How can you blink versus two chakrams? <laughs> it's impossible. But they'll have him here. Oh, Yopaj not quite in range. Throws out the avalanche. Mickey is TPing behind the tower. Tim spots him, but no. They don't quite actually see him. Snowball's not quite fast enough, even now. And boom, they find their moment. They find the way they need to play these fights with that Tusk. So important that that save is going to be there to try and delay things. It's just uh, the BKB piercing control as well. Just, But this is where it really matters. That earlier buyback from Zai, he doesn't have it. And that's why they gave him the Aegis. Another three minutes, and that is a heavy punish. They only have four heroes here. How much can Boom get? They know that this is their time. Although, Kenji tips over to the side. No patch. Oh, tries the toss to toss out. him away. That keeps him alive. Pretty big commitment. Jackie, BKB okay. turn. He's dead. The game didn't stand a chance. And he has to buy back. This is Danger Town. Liquid could lose the game right here if they're not careful. And Boom, want to get as much objectives as they can. FPZ's right up front. Still has the BKB. Nice stalwart tower here. As Yopaj is hunting as well. Looking. Has Silver Edge. Has Blink. One more toss back. That's all they need. But Tumba Man goes down, this game is over. They're Mickey still BKBs, goes down. though. This game's over. Uh, and Liquid, they're, they're not going to tempt fate. Or are they? Oh, 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 whoa, whoa. Tumba Man, BKB, I, they might have to give up Rax here. Still 19 seconds. They turn, they find Mickey. If he goes down, that could be it. Boxy tries to interrupt this, and Mickey, he gets out. He survives. But Tumba Man low, broken. Couple more punches down low, and going to fall. Two minutes dead. Boom! They survive through the madness. Gonna set their sights now on the tier 4 towers. They actually don't have a creep wave. Wait, the buyback from Edge. They gotta get this back in here. It's still two minutes without Matumba Man, but Zai is back up with Mickey. No boxy either. It feels like they could just guide this creep wave in here though, right? It's true. I mean, the, the couriers are flying out. They toss. Insania gets the four staff out. Boom! Bouncing between, do we go for tier fours or do we go for the racks? They're gonna set their sights now onto the tier fours, try and finish this off here. Mickey slowing down what they can. The silence is out. The chakram already thrown. Zai pops the exorcism, trying to delay. This would be a miraculous hold if Liquid could manage it. Zai, BKB runs in. Tim's right on top of them. They're throwing out the impetus shots. I don't know if it's gonna be enough though. Zai down low and eventually falls. 90 seconds gone. And I think Boom have locked this one away as everybody's dead. GG. Boom, strike first blood.
Oh, Liquid holding on for so long there, and even taking the lead at a certain point there, when that Aegis comes up, they managed to grab that, to get the Agnums, it felt like maybe this was their chance to finally be in full control of this game, but boom, answer back with a an excellent base defense. Again, sort of just talking about how we need to play this fight and executing. I, I don't think that could have gone much better for them. They did everything that they needed, um, and uh, again, in one of the most high-stakes matches that you can get, uh, boom, show up on the big stage, making it happen. I, I feel like the Viper a lot of times was like,